Hey guys, it's Dave here, and I thought we could go through a quick cost of goods manufactured statement, as I've got a bit of time to kill before the Brazil vs. Germany World Cup suck game, as I'm a bit of a sleeper fan for Germany, because of course, I've got some family from Germany. So let's go ahead and knock this out of the park, shall we? So last time, I was talking about how inventory, the account on the balance sheet, is subdivided into three sub-accounts. Raw materials, work and process, and finished goods. And if we take work and process, one of the sub accounts, and actually add three items direct materials used, direct labor used, and manufacturing overhead incurred, we're actually going to get a figure known, of, known as cost of goods manufactured, which is the basis for this presentation. And I should say that it's not work in process, the balance that's gonna be added, it's gonna be the change in work in process. This is just a symbol uh, for the delta symbol in the Greek language, which just means change in. So let's go ahead and actually start preparing our cost of goods manufactured statements. So first up, we're gonna be talking about direct materials. So I'm gonna make a little heading that says direct materials and we're going to take the raw materials beginning balance so let's let's come up with some arbitrary numbers let's say that our beginning balance is thirty five thousand dollars and of course we're using the raw materials because that is one part of our inventory account we're just taking raw materials and requisitioning them for production so we're going to be adding any raw material purchases because purchases of course will increase the balance for our total raw materials and that will give us available raw materials so pretty basic logic here so it's just going to be the sum of the former which is going to be 60,000 and then we're going to say less any ending inventory for raw materials so let's say we have forty thousand dollars left in our ending inventory and we had sixty thousand dollars available if we have forty thousand dollars ending that means of course that we've used twenty thousand dollars towards the production of goods so direct materials used is going to be twenty thousand dollars and I'm going to put a little Roman numeral symbol to show that we've completed the first part. The second part is direct labor. Direct labor. So any labor that's traceable to producing a product or any cost object. So we're going to be looking at timesheets. And we're only going to be looking at timesheets for employees on the product line because of course we don't include any wages from the corporate head office. This is all just costs within the manufacturing environment. So we're going to be taking those worksheets and let's say they're $12,000 worth of cost for our for our product line employees. So that's going to be finishing off the direct labor section and then we're going to be moving on transitioning to the manufacturing overhead incurred. And this part is a little bit more picky because, of course, we only are going to be including overhead items that apply to the manufacturing environment. So no corporate overhead headquarter costs. So first up, let's say we have indirect materials. So materials that can't actually be traced to any cost object or, or product and that need to be allocated uh, towards all of the units. So let's say we have what is it, 2000 what do I have here? I have $2,000 of indirect materials. There's also indirect labor, which is 3000 We can also have some factory overhead. Remember, it has to pertain to the factory, so factory rent. Let's say it's $4,000. And we can also have factory utilities, because, of course, we need to keep the lights on in order to continue working. So altogether, that's gonna be five, five, and four, which is $14,000 of overhead. 
and that's going to be the third part. And all together, those three are going to be known as the total manufacturing costs. So those three added up will actually be $46,000. And I'm just going to resize this part before I get to the work in process changes. I think that should be enough room. Maybe a little bit smaller, hopefully you can still see it. So the next part, we're going to be adding the work in process beginning inventory which is $17,000, which I have written down on my whiteboard. Subtract the work in process ending, let's say it's 14,000, and the change in, so the change from beginning to end is actually going to be added to the manufacturing costs. So this is because of course, these costs are the costs of manufacturing units and our manufactured units and $3,000, if it's, or let's say, if we're looking at the beginning inventory of work and process is 70,000, and then we have 14,000 in the end, we've moved $3,000 of work and process to finished goods. So these, those $3,000 of costs are gonna be applied to our, our cost of goods manufactured. So we're gonna add the $3,000 on to cost of goods manufactured. So that's going to be $49,000 for our ending balance. And after we have the cost of goods manufactured number, we can actually start applying it to figure out our cost of goods sold, which is going to be the second part. It's really quick, so don't worry. Uh, you can just pay attention for like two more minutes, try not to tunnel vision. And our cost of goods manufactured, I said it was 49000 And you might be wondering up until this point, what do we do with the finished goods? So this is where the finished goods comes in. We have finished goods beginning inventory. Let's say it's $12,000. And we have finished goods ending inventory, $20,000. Well, we're going to start off with the finished goods beginning and add any cost of goods manufactured. And if you think about it, cost of goods manufactured are just like finished goods. That's why we're being, that's why we're adding the two to actually get available finished goods. And then we're gonna subtract any finished goods ending inventory to get our cost of goods sold. And this should make sense because of course if we have a certain amount of available finished goods and we're left with a certain amount of ending inventory, that means that we've moved goods from the finished goods stage to actual sales. So we're, we're sending them to customers like you so that you're happy and can use your iPod for downloading music or whatever have you. And let's just kind of quickly throw in the numbers just so we actually have numbers inputted here. So 12,000 plus 49,000 was $61,000 of available finished goods. Subtract the 20,000 ending inventory is going to give you 41,000. So that's, that's all I wanted to go over. Cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold We'll be talking, I think, about journal entries and how to actually debit and credit these, these transitions between direct materials to work in process, work in process to finished goods, and so on. So make sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys later. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.